So in this video, I'll be answering a question from a gentleman that had purchased my ebook. The question was, should I buy a trailer first or should I buy an espresso machine? So it's a really good question and obviously it's it's uh, you know there's not going to be a black or a white answer for this one it's going to be kind of gray um, i did ask a couple questions from him what i was finding out is that this particular gentleman is pretty uh mechanically inclined and he's able to do plumbing and electricity but he doesn't have any barista experience so when it comes to making these type of decisions obviously there's no right answer but the biggest thing for me um, is I like to try to just try to get one foot in front of the other when I'm dealing with big obstacles. What I like to do is I like to approach problems from a sense of what's going to be the single decision that's going to get me rolling the most. I want to get the biggest bang for buck out of my actions. Since this gentleman's particularly mechanically inclined and doesn't have barista experience, what I would be more inclined to do is move towards building the trailer first. The reason why is because you're gonna get your feet wet right away. You're gonna start building this trailer out, seeing some results. For me particularly, whenever I see positive feedback, that just encourages me to keep going. So I know that about myself. If I see um, something be successful on like my beta testing, then I'm likely to just keep rolling with that. Versus if I'm not seeing results right away, a probability that in that area um, I may start doubting my thought process on, on how I'm moving down this this path and, and for uh, this gentleman TJ since he's able to all, he already has a knowledge base on building things out then he would be able to build out that trailer and start selling coffee right away the beautiful thing behind that is then the, tra the trailer itself would be able to finance his espresso machine so if you run you know, say you were to do like some farmer's markets. We used to do, a, <clears throat> it wasn't even the busy one. We did the second busiest one in the city, you know, farmer's market. We made 600 bucks a day, you know, so that's give or take 2,400 bucks a month. And you would, in one month, you would have your espresso machine completely paid for. And we did the farmer's market with, without an espresso machine. We just used the cold brew recipes that I, um, that I have in my ebook. Um, but the way I like to do things is I like to have smaller projects pay for the next project so you know for example green joe coffee truck number one paid for green joe coffee truck number two in which those two coffee trucks paid for my brick and mortar generally like to have smaller things kind of reinvest in themselves and grow um, so for this particular answer because he doesn't have any breeze to experience it's hard for me to make that particular recommendation because you know you would buy the espresso machine and you would practice which is good but there's not going to be a very strong positive feedback loop as far as moving along in this journey that runs a risk of um, not making progress. If you were to build out the coffee trailer, it's more likely that you're going to continue down that path, that you're going to continue down that road. So I think for me, what's more important than anything else, espresso machine, truck, it doesn't matter, is that you get started. I mean, that's the biggest thing because most people just put it off. I mean, if you don't do something and say, okay, I'm moving forward, what's going to happen is it keeps getting put off to the next day. And as entrepreneurs, we have to tend, we tend to do these self-imposed deadlines. You know, the biggest thing for me is just getting started. So if you already have a skill set in building out trucks and trailers and plumbing and all that stuff, I would say go with that because you can get started in that direction right away, start making some money. That's where things can ultimately bloom. That would be my recommendation for this particular situation. Okay, so doing a, a new thing is I like to tell a story about my coffee truck journey. This particular one is the story of when I got my trailer stolen. So since I'm recommending him to buy a trailer, you, I should talk about when mine was stolen. So I bought a 74 Scamp at Lubbock, Texas and drove it home. And I had it parked in my garage is where I had it parked. And I kind of lived, I live in Albuquerque and Albuquerque is one of the higher cities for property crime. 
Um, and my neighborhood was, it wasn't like in a, like a phenomenal neighborhood, but it wasn't in a bad neighborhood either. I was right between. So the negative thing about being in between a seedy neighborhood and a nice neighborhood is you have people walking from their seedy neighborhood to the nice neighborhood to see what they can pick up along the way. Right. You just get a lot of traffic that kind of moves through. This particular uh, house that we lived in at the time, I, my driveway was on the side of the house. It was kind of odd. I, li I lived on a corner. And so the front of the house was, you know, over here. And I parked the, uh, the, the trailer on the side of the house. Weekend, uh, my wife and her sister wanted to do a garage sale. So they asked me if I could move the trailer um, into the street. And I said, yeah, of course. So that's what I did. I moved the trailer into the street. I don't remember exactly what happened, but that night I didn't, uh, I didn't put it back. And so come the next morning, my sister-in-law comes in and she's like, Vince, where's your trailer? And I just, that, you know, that, that sinking moment where, you know, something bad really happened. I was like, ah, you know, my stomach just sank. So I go out there and sure enough, it's gone. Right. And I'm like, man, the trailer's gone. So I started going around the neighborhood and seeing if I can find it and couldn't find anything. I called the police and put a report in. And then I put up a sign uh, in my, uh, my driveway. And I said, you know, trailer was stolen, reward if found. Maybe about a week later, my wife and I just finished eating dinner and I'm driving up to the house and there's some guy in my driveway. And so, you know, I park the car, I get out of the driveway and I'm like, in a nice way, like, hey, what are you doing in my yard? You know, what, like, what's up, man? And he was like, hey, man, I'm a, a drummer in this band. And I, I live across the street. We we play, uh, like, in a house. They used to, like, rent a house. Kind of in, a sh like, a shady neighborhood. Because, it, it, like, a bunch of bands would rent this house. And everyone would take turn practicing. And they would throw parties at the house. Well, anyhow, so he played, in, he played with his band in another house in another neighborhood. And he was a drummer and he was saying that, you know, he noticed that trailer because, you know, being in a band, if any, and when you guys have been in a band before, you know that you're often loading equipment. And so things like trailers kind of pop out to you. So he was like, I, you know, I, I noticed your trailer was stolen across the, the street from where my band practices a trailer like yours popped up and I was like, well, where's it at, man? You know, like spit it out, you know? Sure enough, I go over there to this neighborhood and it's, it's my trailer. You know, I open it up and all the things that I had on it, I had like one of those tongue locks that sit on the trunk of the trailer that had been broken. All the locks inside had been broken. So it's been ransacked, but nothing like major was, was broken on it. And it was still, you know, intact. They didn't wreck it or anything. So, you know, I called the police and said, hey, this is my trailer, produce the title and stuff. And, and they said, okay, yeah, you can take it. It wasn't reported as because the thieves had pulled the license plate off. And so it was just sitting in this abandoned apartment. Apparently what had happened was the thieves had stolen a flat but a flatbed trailer and they were just driving around the neighborhood loading stuff onto the flatbed. That night they happened to drive by my trailer and so they didn't even use the the tongue thing. All they did is they lifted the trailer up and then rolled it because it was a small trailer, 13 feet, and rolled it onto their flatbed. And then what they were doing was having a yard sale in that neighborhood, trying to sell all this stuff for cash. Um, and they were playing their music too loud, which is kind of, there's irony in it because that's where the band practices, but whatever. Police, someone called the police. Police showed up and said, okay, you need to produce a title for all this stuff. They couldn't do it. And so they got busted on the flatbed and hauled the guys off to jail and then my trailer they couldn't locate me because they couldn't locate the uh the, the license plate um so that's the reason why it had just been stuck there so fortunately i got it back you know i gave the guy a nice reward and everything and talked to him a couple other times after that because he did leave across the street but part of my journey is like having that trailer stolen you know and going i just i i remember like just feeling so defeated you know i i it was like just crushing because just prior to that trailer the truck that i had purchased for the trailer seized its engine so like it was like all the the universe was just like trying to get in my way from doing this and i just remember that feeling of just like being deflated and being like oh man i don't know if this is gonna work out you know
but it did. It worked out. You know, it did work out. You know, thank goodness to, to that drummer. Thank goodness to drummers. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a story of the trailer getting stolen. After that, what I did, I brought it back into the, the driveway. I brought it back into the driveway. And I just took the tires off, you know. So if someone wanted to steal it, um, they would have to get their own set of tires. So. Anyways, thanks for watching the video. I hope this helps. Um, if you're interested in coffee trucking, I really encourage jumping down to the website. I mean, that's where you're going to find all of our good information. If you have questions, feel free to throw them in the comment box. Liking the video will help with spreading the news, um, sharing the video, especially to a barista in your life. And then, you know, by all means, if this is um, something you're interested in doing, then feel free to hit the subscribe button. The little bell right next to it will make sure that you get uh, notifications from me whenever I put up a new video. You never know where that journey is going to take you. I, I mean, we've uh, served coffee to the Rolling Stones, uh, Lawrence Fishburne, all, you know, crazy movie stars. We've just had like so many cool experiences. And four years since Green Joe opened, it's just been... Uh, uh, it's been a cool, crazy, fun ride, and I've really enjoyed it. And if I can help you guys get started in yours, I'm all about it. So thanks for visiting my my YouTube page and, and the website, and, and, uh, and I, I hope you guys get started on your dreams too.